Everybody and welcome into the Broncos Sports Network. Glad to have all your Broncos fans with us as we get ready for another edition of the Pigskin Press Talk. Talking a little Fayetteville State football as we get set for week six of the calendar and week four of conference play. Andrew Chapman joined by the head coach Richard Hayes along with a couple of Bronco football players as well on the offensive and defensive side of the football. We're joined by running back DJ Alston as well as uh, safety Dylan Morris. Guys, thanks for sitting down with us. Thanks for having us. So, uh, so, Coach, let's uh, flash back to the last <laughs> couple of weeks. Uh, you guys are on a nice little three-week road stretch right now, mm -hmm. uh, something that didn't do last year, but, but now the guys are kind of bouncing around campus to campus and uh, undefeated in conference play, wins against Virginia Union, low-scoring game on the road, 10-7, mm -hmm. and then last week against Bluefield State, the uh, newest mm -hmm. member of the CIAA conference. Let me just ask you about the, the preparation process behind Bluefield State. How is it different when you're seeing a conference opponent for, for the first time ever, a, a team that you might not have a ton of experience with in the past? And, and how did you guys go in preparing for that one? Well, it was very different um, not having to, having played Bluefield before. Mm -hmm. uh, from what we saw on film, they were playing this one particular kid at quarterback. Um, he seemed to be pretty electric back there. But when we got to Bluefield, he didn't play. So <laughs> it's just you never know what you're going to expect. Uh, we have to really focus on ourselves and make sure that we're sharp and, uh, and executing in what we do and the things that we do, um, and then we just go out and play the game. So, so what is the, uh, the the quick conversation the coaches have in the headset when the quarterback that you might have expected yeah, to, yeah. to roll out there is, is not the guy? Well, uh, we kind of met at midfield yeah. and kind of saw it. Uh, he yeah. was standing over there to the side, and he uh, wasn't dressed. Um, so we said, wait a minute now. So yeah. we had to rethink some things, but it worked out for us, and we won the game, so we'll take it. Yeah, 28-18 to 18 win. It's been a lot of one, two-score games this year, really, mm -hmm. really for FSU down the stretch. What do you think that comes down to in the end? You know, fourth quarter, communication, all that stuff really has to be in line. What, what's effectively allowed you guys to win those, those close games this year? Oh, well, one, we just believe that we can do it. You know, yeah. uh, Virginia Union was a, a really close game. It was in a torrential downpour, and uh, we, uh, we all made sure that we got our guys out there early in the rain before the game started because we knew we had to play in it. So there's no sense in just sitting in the locker room saying it's raining, it's raining when everybody knows it's raining. So we went out there and got acclimated to the weather. I think they stayed in the locker room a little longer than we did that day, and I think that kind of helped us in the end. Yeah, going back to the Virginia Union game a couple of weeks ago, I got a kick out of your post-game interview. You're just getting dumped on out there uh, talking about the game, just, just pouring in, in uh, Virginia Union, but the Broncos came out with the win. Uh, breaking down the box score a little further of this uh, Bluefield State game, guys, it, it was a... Uh, it was a ground attack, maybe more so than, than any other game. You guys like to run the rock, but uh, but this time around, you got both quarterbacks moving. Caden Davis with a long touchdown run. Damari Daniels got into the end zone with his legs as well. Uh, with the, the way that game transpired, what led to you and, and the coaching staff kind of going to the ground as, as much as you did in that game, maybe even more so than usual? Well, just trying to get some confidence, build the off offense some confidence. Um, you know, Damari and Caden have been kind of dinged up, so we really ha haven't been able to show that phase of our offense and we wanted to get it going now that we had both of those guys back kind of healthy so just something that we just wanted to do and, and see how it worked out uh Demar ran the ball a lot last for us last year uh Caden ran the ball a lot for us last year and we hadn't had that this year we've been kind of relying on our running backs and our quarterbacks throwing the ball so just to get our quarterback run game going kind of led to that and it just happened like it did we threw the ball I believe seven times uh, because we didn't really have to mm -hmm. And DJ, you know, I'll ask you because uh, while we're talking ground game and as much you guys as much as you guys did run the ball against Bluefield State, you know, does it help you when you have a couple of mobile guys under center like a Caden or a Damari that, that can run it themselves, but then maybe open up some looks for you as well and direct the attention elsewhere? How, how does that help your game personally? Uh, it helps a lot because it still uh, freezes the defense in a lot, it freezes the alley player because you know they can pull it any time, take off running down the sideline. They're fast enough, they're big enough, so they got a game tackle both of them. They're mm -hmm. both big quarterbacks. So it helps us a lot. And uh, Dylan, of course, you had an impact in, in that game as well. It wasn't just a run game, but a, uh, a pick six that you took to the house against Bluefield State. And, uh, you know, how's, how's that feel once you, uh, you you make the interception and then you, you have kind of room in front of you to go? I, I didn't see the actual play, but did you have blockers in front of you? How did that one transpire in your head and, and on the field? Uh, yeah, I had a whole convoy in front of me. <laughs> uh, everybody's been making fun of me because this is the second time that I've gotten to the end zone off an interception this season. My first one was just called back. But everybody's made the joke like, 
every time you get the pick, there's nobody to even juke out. We want to see if you got some jukes or something. Mm -hmm. But I had a full combo in front of me to get to there. So Todd and Holo Line were just uh, were, were just there in front of you, I guess. Yeah, and a lot of you just kind of back off when uh, when you have the contingent going. But uh, it, you know, there's no there's been no shortage of, of great secondary players. Uh, you're at the safety spot over the last couple of years. Think of Brandon Barnes Brown. Uh, going back to 2021, of course, Josh Williams, who's you know now a Kansas City Chief, making an impact in the NFL. Your second year with FSU after coming in last season, but but who are some of the guys early on in your Bronco career that helped acclimate you to the program and, and now turn you into to one of the leaders on the defensive end? Uh, definitely guys like Brandon. Brandon was one of the first people I met when I got on campus, and uh, he kind of just immediately immediately was like, if you need anything, let me know. Mm -hmm. And he was a big part of you know helping me learn the defense because I did originally come in as a corner. So learning the corner scheme from him and then uh, also guys like Kenny Merritt, who were on the team last year, uh, learning safety and learning the other positions of the secondary as well. Mm -hmm. They were a big help in that. Yeah. And, there, you know, this, uh, on the offensive side of things too, DJ, there's, there's so much internal competition, but, but also talent within the mm -hmm. running back core this year, whether it's McQueen or, or Julian Milligan, who's been an impact player this year, Bryce Council as well. Can you describe that relationship that the running backs have in practice, that internal motivation competition you guys have in, in, in the game as well when so many different guys can make an impact? Uh, we're all like a funny group, always hanging out together. Mm -hmm. uh, regardless of what's going on in the field, we always uplift each other, make sure everybody's good. Uh, during practice, we're always laughing, having fun. We also have that same mentality of uh, the first person can't bring you down, and if you, they do, we're going to joke you about it. Yeah, is that is that right, Coach? Is the running is the running back core the most lighthearted uh, group of the uh, of, of, of all the, the skill positions? Or the wide receivers. I got some very interesting too. groups out there. I didn't yeah. say that. Yeah, man, that, that that's good. Well, it's it's been great to see that many different you know players get involved on a on a week by week basis in the run game as well. What uh, would you say, DJ, originally drew you to playing running back? Is is that a position that goes back to your early days of football? Nah, uh -huh. uh, <laughs> that's probably like my fifth time telling this story. But I started out playing like safety uh -huh. rover area for almost my whole life until like my sophomore year of high school. Mm -hmm. Then that's when like it switched to like running back because we needed one. And then it just took off from there. I played running back at Pop Warner, but that's more of like Hey, here's the ball. Mm -hmm. Go, go do something. Yeah. But now, like when I got to high school, it was like it was like a scheme of things. I had to relearn a lot of things. But yeah, it must, mostly started off with like my sophomore year mm -hmm. high school. Do you still find yourself being, I guess, relatively new to the position, or, or having not played it for a long time, having to do a little bit of extra film study on a week to week uh, basis? Or so my dad was also a running back as mm -hmm. well. So it's it's kind of like almost natural to me. But I should still have to put in a lot of film study a lot of extra work off outside of practice and making sure that like my body's good and my mind is good for the game. Yeah, because you have to be ready for the uh, the contact, obviously. Yeah. You have to be uh, ready for that element. Have there been any NFL guys or college guys over recent years that you find yourself watching a lot and trying to maybe model yourself after? So my favorite running back of all time is Le'Veon Bell. So I watch him a lot, but I also watch Zeke a lot as well. And then older running backs, I watch Walter Payton, how physical mm -hmm. and dominant he was. So that's how I try to represent myself. I try to be as patient as Le'Veon, have the explosiveness as, as Zeke, but also have the power of Walter Payton. Okay, yeah, those, those are those are good influences. We'll, we'll have to we'll have to kind of focus on that next time because that was Le'Veon's thing. You know, he'd sit back, wait one or two seconds, let that O line you know kind of develop in front of him, and, the, and then go after that. So uh, definitely some some good guys to, to model your game after. And uh, you know, you mentioned your your dad. Your parents are uh, is it Elizabeth City State yes. the alums? What does it mean for for uh, you and, and your family to be carrying on the CIAA uh, tradition and, and playing for Fayetteville State? Uh, it's, it's a lot. My sister also went to Elizabeth City as well, so we're all uh, HBCU grads, and so it's a lot. I just want to be the next one too, and then hopefully my kids mm -hmm. become HBCU grads as well. Yeah. So so what uh, ECU and Fayetteville State play. What, what hats are they wearing? Is that uh, that's, that's, um, <laughs> are they putting on the Bronco? They, I guess it's blue and white at the end of the yeah, day, they right? Go, so. They probably they probably go put on a, a, a Elizabeth City alumni shirt and wear a Bronco Bronco hat. Uh, Dylan, you know, I'll, I'll ask you too. And, and both of you guys were a part of the, uh, the the CIAA championship game last year and, and got to have that experience. Uh, how did that just change your mindset this year or, or preparation? Uh, kind of going into preseason camp and, and practice and you know. Experiencing that moment, that type of a game, and, and that will to want to get back to that point this year, how's that kind of changed your perspective? Uh, the biggest thing that like I've been on is just like trying not to be content, uh, realizing that that was last season and this is this season. Um, I told a bunch of guys after the Virginia Union game because everybody was in the locker room, you know, super excited, 
you know, I told a couple of people, like, if y'all think this is fun, like, let's go up to Salem, let's go win that, and y'all see how fun that really is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, you know, now that you're, you're, you're settled in out here as an East Coast football player now, that wasn't so much the case last year. You're, you're a California guy originally, uh, as, am I, as am I, so I uh, like to have a fellow Californian sit down. But, uh, you know, do you like the East Coast more? Do you like the West Coast more? Uh, do you feel kind of acclimated to everything out here? Uh, I'm always say West Coast, best coast, <laughs> uh -huh. but uh, the East Coast has definitely grown on me. Uh, I've had a lot of family, like, in the South, so I'm a... I'm a southern kid at heart, but the west coast still yeah. on top. But around this time of year, humidity kind of clears out. You know, it's it's starting to feel a little bit more like a little warm out here still, but a little bit more like football weather. Uh, can't can't beat it on, on the east coast around this time of year. Uh, let's look forward to uh, what's to come, Coach uh, Hayes. We've got mm -hmm. St. Augustine's on the road this coming Saturday for a one o'clock kickoff. Uh, they're a team that you know the the Broncos historically have had a lot of success against. A 54 nothing win last year. Uh, coach Feggins, the offensive coordinator from last season, is their new head coach this year. So they're kind of getting that coaching staff and that program reestablished under him. But uh, when you go up against a former coordinator, uh, that, that's always an interesting poker game leading up to the game itself. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, how does the week change for you at, at all when you have a, a former coach that you're going up against and uh, kind of knows a little bit of your scheme? Well, it really doesn't change for us. Um, yeah. Like I tell the guys, they still have to play us. I mean, they can know what we're doing. Um, we pretty much kind of know what they're doing. We still have to play the game. So as long as we focus on ourselves, make sure our guys are executing and doing the things that we're asking them to do, I think we'll be fine. We take care of the football on offense. We get off the field on third down, and we continue to play good on special teams. Mm -hmm. We'll be fine. When you dissect last week's uh, win over Bluefield State, what do you key, really key in on on what you'd like to see improve, uh, you know, if anything, going into St. Augustine this week? Uh, one of the things that I've talked about this week is uh, uh, how we've had uh, – a numerous amount of tackles for loss against our offense, mm -hmm. um, meaning when we hand the ball off to our running backs, they're immediately getting tackled. Uh, that happened a couple times last week. It happened a couple times against Virginia Union. So we've been really trying to focus on making sure we take care of the interior down linemen, working our way up to the linebacker and giving our backs some running room. All right. Well, we're looking forward to uh, following along with the action, and uh, you can as well, fsubroncos.com for all of the live stats in game. And, again, that's a daytime game. Games will start getting a little bit earlier now here in October through conference play, 1 o'clock in Raleigh on Saturday, and then the Broncos will be back home a couple of weeks after that against uh, Livingstone for a 2 o'clock kick right here at Nick Gerald's Stadium. Thanks so much for tuning in to this week's edition of the Pigskin Press Talk for running back DJ Alston, safety Dylan Morris, and also the head coach Richard Hayes. I'm Andrew Chapman signing off. So long.